All right, everybody, welcome to another show of L Liberators. I am Tiger White, and I'm with my co-host, Kevin Thornton. And today we have this magnificent guy. Oh, man, this guy's great. When I met him, he was nothing but smiles and, you know, just, just positive energy. And I was like, this guy has something for the world. So today we have John Mendez from Walk to Wealth. What's up, John? How's it going, Tiger, man? Good to catch up with you, man. He had you on my show, had a great conversation, and now we on yours, and hopefully you're going to have an even better conversation now. I can try. We set the bar pretty high last time, so it's going to be hard to try to top that, but I'm here for it, and I'm ready. All right, that's what's up. So just, just, you know, just so people can, you know, our community can get abreast of who you are and what you do out here in the community, just tell them a little bit about yourself and, and what you're doing out here in the community. Yeah, so like the quick little 60 second pitch, I guess. Uh, I'm the founder of the Walk to Wealth podcast where I enlighten and empower young adults to build a wealthy, abundant life. And what I like to say that fulfills my purpose. I feel like that's what I've been called to do. Uh, the duty of the enlightened is to enlighten the unenlightened. You feel me? So it's like trying to put people on game with me with the podcast. And then on the other side, I'm also the founder of Stop and Stare Media where I, I help business owners leverage AI to create content that converts. And uh, I like to say that fulfills my pockets. And so I got one that fulfills my purpose, one that fulfills my pockets, and I'm doing both things right now while I figure out this entrepreneurship game, man. That's what's up. Say what's up, Kev. You got anything? You can start with them first if you want, or, you know, I'll I'll, uh, I'll leave it up so, to you. So, yeah, for my question for you is um, for the AI, I'm new to the AI game. How do people like myself, who is like a life coach, use AI to create content? Yeah, that's a great question. So what I would do is honestly, the first step, most people know about ChatGPT or have at least heard of it. If you haven't, ChatGPT is this big chatbot tool that kind of got pop on the scene. November, 2022, it became like public. And uh, from since then, like it's been, paving the way for AI. AI has been around for a minute now, but it's only been like something you had to be in tech or had to work at some big company to even know about it. It wasn't the way it is now. And once ChatGPT came on the scene, it really changed the game for everybody. And so one of the things that ChatGPT came out with uh, not too long ago, sometime mid this year, if I'm not mistaken, in 2023, is this tool called uh, Custom Instructions. And so what Custom Instructions are, it's pretty much you can uh, pretty much set up ChatGPT in the settings and give it a little bit of information about yourself and then save it so that every time you talk to ChatGPT, it already got a little bit of context as to who you are and what you do, right? So instead of having to tell ChatGPT every time you start a new conversation, hey, my name is Kevin Thornton, I'm a life coach, I help blah, 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 go from X to Z, right? You just do that one time. And so the first step I would say, right, is I would go into ChatGPT now this works whether you have the free plan or the paid plan. So whatever you decide to go about, it doesn't matter. So I would go into ChatGPT and say something along the lines of, hey, I want you to imagine that you are a interviewer, interviewer and I want you to interview me to get a deeper understanding as to who I am and what I do with my business. I want you to ask me a series of questions one at a time until you can get a deep understanding as to who I am. Um, do you understand? If so, start with the first question. P paste that right into ChatGPT, hit enter, and then from there, start letting ChatGPT interview you and you know whatever it asks you, start responding to it. And from there, once you feel like it has enough context, uh, whether that's five questions in or 10 questions in, depending on how long you want to go with it, right? Then I would say, summarize this now in 1500 characters or less. Now, it's very important that it's under 1500 characters, because if it's over, it won't fit. So summarize it under 1500 characters, take that, go back into the settings, paste that into the custom instructions, hit save, right? And then from there, now ChatGPT, every time you start a new conversation, already knows who you are and what you do to a decent understanding, right? At a decent level. Then from there, I will start getting into, all right, now help me write video scripts or whatever, whatever. But if it doesn't know who you are, it can't really personalize it to who you are and what you do. And that's why a lot of times ChatGPT sounds like a robot. It doesn't know who you are. Like, how you expect a stranger to go in and, and help you with your business? Like, you wouldn't do that if it was a real person. So treat it like a, it was a human type stuff. You know what I mean? Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, I love, I love, I love Chat G. I love, I love Chat GPT. Anything, but like he said, man, any it has to get to know you. If it doesn't know you, it's just spitting out random, random information, and we all know that we're different. I know you had something else, Kev. I'm sorry. Uh-uh. Go ahead. Yeah. So, but I, I mean, to to me, you know, um, you know, because I use it here and there. But I noticed you said something about purpose. What was the other piece? You said one is your purpose, and one is uh, I'm sorry, my pockets. My pockets. Your pockets. So this is this is you know where I'm at too as well. It's like okay, your purpose, and then your pockets. How do you how do you navigate that? Because you know sometimes you can find people that they get into they understand they got a purpose, but then they have the that pocket part that distraction from distracts them from that purpose. So how do you stay yeah. more morally and ethically balanced? with trying to do your purpose and fill your pockets? Nah, uh, so that's a great question. It's something I've been thinking about a lot because for me, I know that where your attention grows, whatever you're doing grows. So wherever your attention goes, and if your attention is divided, right, then you'll grow a lot slower. And for me, I, I was really at, at, at war with that. So when I first got into entrepreneurship, right, the first thing I was, I was a real estate agent. Right, a couple months after, right, I got my license. I started teaching social media classes and I started my podcast. The whole time behind the scenes, I was also working at a restaurant. So I was doing four things. And from the outside looking in, I was getting after it. You know, you see me on social media. I was looking good. I was making my reels. You would have thought I was a top agent doing my thing, whatever, whatever. And it wasn't that way at all. If anything, everything was actually crumbling down. I wasn't mm-hmm. selling any houses. The restaurant was barely making any money. The podcast was has still to this day hasn't made any money. And then the social media classes, my first year doing that, made a thousand bucks. My first seven months doing that, it didn't make anything, right? And so it's just like, I was doing all these things and burning my wheels. And I was really just like, not getting anywhere with anything. And so around late 2022, I started to decide to quit real estate. I still have a license active, right? So if someone needed help, I could help them. But I quit putting any time and energy and effort into it. And I was like, all right, I'm teaching you social media classes. How can I then turn this into something that I can get money from? Because I felt unworthy of charging for my classes because I didn't sell any houses. And most of my audience were real estate agents. It's like, how am I teaching these people who sell more houses than me how to sell houses? But they weren't coming to me for this house and stuff. They were coming for the social media piece, right? And um, so I was like, all right, what if I keep doing these classes for free and then I just start charging people to create the content for them and do like an agency service. And so after my first client realized I hated it, so it dropped that, right? And then from there, now it's like, all right, I quit real estate to do this. My million dollar idea failed and now I'm stuck. And at that time for four months straight, my podcast numbers were going down despite me posting an episode a week consistently and posting about two to three reels per day across multiple platforms. Numbers was going down every month. And so I'm like, damn, like what's going on? I'm like, I got a good head on my shoulder. I believe I'm a good, really good person. I, I'm getting after it. I was going to conferences. I'm investing in myself. I'm learning, I'm working hard. And it's like, I'm not going out, I'm not partying, I'm not doing any of the stuff that a lot of people my age were doing. And yet, despite that, literally everything, I, I had like, whatever the opposite of the Midas touch was, I had that. Like everything I was doing was just failing, right? And I was at a crossroads last year around December. And I was just like, right, what is it that I'm going to do? And I found this concept called Ikigai. And it's the Japanese concept that stands for your reason for being, right? And the people where this comes from, uh, they're called the land of the, the I forget, the land of uh, immortals because they have the longest life expectancy on the planet. They have literally their life expectancy is like almost close to the hundred. Um, and so it's pretty much the intersection of four circles. What you love to do mixed with what, um, what the world needs, mixed with what you can be rewarded for, mixed with what you're good at, right? So when you find the intersection of those four circles, you find your icky guy. And going through that exercise myself, I realized that I feel like the podcast really is truly my purpose. Like that enlightening piece, like I love teaching. Even with the social media classes, like that was teaching. That's the part that got me fired up. And so in January this year, I joined a mastermind for the first time. And in the mastermind, they had a class on AI, how to use ChatGPT. And he used ChatGPT to create a course and on how to use ChatGPT. And at the end of the course, he sc- shows himself screen recording like of him going in ChatGPT and typing everything up to create the course. And I'm just like, yo, this guy, 
<laughs> this guy got it good. Like, yo, I, I thought I because at that time I was using it, but like not to that level. Right. And so I two weeks after did a class on how to use ChatGPT, use ChatGPT to cre uh, create that class, upsold to a workshop. And it was 20 spots at 197, sold out within 24 hours, made a quick four thousand, And that was more money than I made in three months into working at the restaurant and more money than I made in all of 2022 with social media stuff times three, right? Uh, times four, actually. So I that's where I was like, okay, I can get paid to keep doing these social media classes, right? But also I can keep doing the podcast. And so where I'm at right now, very long winded answer, but to summarize it pretty much is I'm using the AI stuff to fund what I have going on with the podcast. The reason why I'm doing that is if because you mix work and play too soon, then you end up turning your, you know, your love and your passion into a job, mm -hmm. which you some a lot of times takes the joy out of it. Mm -hmm. And Alex Ramosi talks about like the goal of life and business, right? Isn't to win. It's to last because most people never do. Right. And because I know I'm getting into this entrepreneurship game, I mean, I got in at 20, but now I'm 22. Most entrepreneurs, it's a second or third career for them. So they're not getting starting their business until they're 40. So due to the law of attrition, I literally have 18 years of just time to F off and still <laughs> will be at a point ahead. You know, by the time other people start, you know, I'll have all those 18 years of experience if I just decide to take this next 18 years off. So I was like, all right, let me go crazy with the AI stuff and run that up while it's hot and while I'm still early on into it, run up a bag so that I have enough money to then do this podcast stuff without having to worry about whether it's making money or not mm -hmm. and just truly do it because I enjoy it. Now, long term, I see the podcast turning into its own thing and then having that just be what fulfills my pockets and my purpose. But for the time being, I'm not too soon to rush into it because I know I got an early on head start than most people do. And I know I'm doing it for the long haul. Yeah, that's real. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Hey, that was that was real in depth, man. I've never heard anybody break it down so well, man. <laughs> yeah, I know you said it was like it's kind of long winded, but to summarize it, this is what it is. But I mean, if anybody watches this, there should be no like, oh, I got a question for him broke it down man like because the, the thing is I, you say you're 22 yeah. you know we go out in the community we're both kevin and i are from atlanta we have you know people we inter interact with like they're older than 22 that are struggling like yeah. where do you where do you get that ambition or i call it ambition or that positive energy from is it natural or that you just like man i don't know i just got it or is this that yeah. you saw somebody or what where do you get that from I think a big part of it was like, in terms of like the entrepreneurial spirit, I think we're all born entrepreneurs. And one of three things happens at, you know, in our childhood. We either are brought into a family that embraces that and you know helps further develop that entrepreneurial spirit, right? Or we're brought into a family that doesn't embrace that. And you know through some traumatic experience or something along the way, you lose it and then have to rediscover it. That's where I feel like I and a lot of entrepreneurs fall into. And then the last group of people, which is like the majority of the population, were born into it, but then lost it somewhere along the way and then never pick it back up, right? So I, I don't feel like it was that I was born with something that other people don't have. I think we're all entrepreneurial in the sense, like it's just a creative side of our brain, right? And some people have that further developed and have that are embracing that for more, more than other people. And uh, I believe for me, part of it is I'm very competitive by nature. So like whatever it was, like even in high school and gym class, like I was that guy, like I, it's the NBA finals, every gym class when I lace up, like I don't care. Like I, I don't care if I got, you know, seven exams that day, I'm going into gym class ready to kill everybody. Like it, there's n take no prisoners, right? So I always been super competitive at any, at, at everything that I did. And once I got into entrepreneurship, that translated really well. But then also a large part of it has, that has to do with my faith. I feel like for me as being a Christian, right? A lot of people are Christian live in fear. And it's like, you're literally like the first chapter of the Bible talks about how we're made in God image. So if we're made in God's image, and it's like with him, he, he I know that he has 
better plans working out for me at all times. Like he's not out to get me. He's not out to sabotage me. He wants the best for me, very best for me. And I know that firmly and I believe that. It's like, how could I live my life scary? Yeah. Like I, I, I gotta leave it all. I would find like, yo, I seen this one definition, quick sidebar of procrastination that hit me deep. And it was like, I, for anyone that's listening, write this down, right? It's like procrastination is the arrogant assumption that God owes you another opportunity to do what you had time to do today. And when I read that, I was like, damn, like <laughs> that's true. That is, it's true though. Like, cause pro- tomorrow's never promised. Right. And it's like a lot of people that's not waking up tomorrow. So it's like, it's a very deep, very dark kind of definition of it, but it's, it's true. And so it's like, yeah. man, like don't put off till tomorrow what you had time to do today. Mm-hmm. And so it's like knowing that and it's like knowing that like I got a bunch of like quotes that I can just fire off at any time because like for me not having a set role model uh, of music and lyrics and verses with things like I always fell back on when I need the strength. And so another one that I love is uh, if life was easy, it wouldn't be worth living. God gives his best soldiers the worst missions. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's like stuff like that. I just replay in my head all the time. And I know it's like it's going to get hard and difficult. And it's like another one I love. It's one cannot wish for strong character and an easy life because the price of one is the other, mm-hmm. right? It, I got just a bunch of these quotes just to remind me, like, yo, it, it's going to be tough. But despite that, not only we're we meant to survive it, we're built in a way that we could thrive despite all the suffering and struggle around us, right? And so it's just like, you know, giving my all into everything I got going on. There's days I slack off. There's days that. I don't do too much. I came back from vacation. I checked my email like maybe three times, bro. I was chilling. And like my business isn't at a point where I'm making millions of dollars. Like I'm still trying to figure the business stuff out. Some people may say like I haven't earned a vacation yet. Some people may say that you don't deserve a vacation until you're making six figures a month, whatever, whatever. But it's like, man, like there's no one correct way to live life. So it's like, you know, when I'm on, I turn it on and like I get after it. And when it's time to chill, I chill. chill and like yeah yeah that's what's up yeah okay you go you yeah i'll let you i'll let you i'm not bad it's dope yeah. but hey i love the quotes though i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to get to because yeah. I, I you know the icky guy and all that i'm gonna have to write these quotes down but uh it's on you kid he's dope um my question is um since you are a social media guy what do you recommend people who is trying to build their platform or if they're trying to sell a product like for myself i have uh, a t-shirt or hoodie that says i am love which is good corresponds to what you just said that you know we are both um creating the image of likeness of god and god is love so therefore we are love i am love so if i wanted to with social media being so hard sometimes with the algorithm all the type of stuff what do you recommend somebody like me to get into the right hands people could see while i'm trying to put out there yeah no that's a great question so i honestly wouldn't really consider myself a social media guy per se like for me most of the stuff i learned about marketing comes from direct response marketing which is actually closer to your time than it is closer to mine a lot mm-hmm. of the stuff the marketing principles i follow it's because like platforms like algorithms they're all vehicles right and there's always a new car every year right Every mm-hmm. year is something new, you feel me? So it's like, I try not to stay super up to date with like the algorithm and stuff like that and best time to post and trends and all that stuff. For me, the way I see it, as I said, a lot of this stuff comes from direct response marketing principles. It's like one of the best ones I learned is like uh, the PQRRs, right? Problems, questions, roadblocks, and results. So your ideal client avatar, right? has problems questions and roadblocks that's currently preventing them to get their dream result what they want to get to and so when you're creating content right what i try to do is i ask myself is this speaking to this problem to their problems question and roadblocks that they're already asking right not that i think they're asking that i know they're already asking and talking about and then is this helping them get to their ideal result so let's take for example let's say you're a marriage counselor right the ideal result is having their marriage resolved. Getting back to where it was before, you know, all the, you know, when they first got married, right? Sure. It's like, that's where they want to get to. Some of the problems, questions, and roadblocks they might be having is like, oh, maybe about infidelity, or maybe about, you know, um, 
the husband not being able to provide like they used to or not being as fun or as spicy as they used to, whatever it, it may be going to. And right, the better you understand those problems, question of Roblox, and the better you can speak to that dream result that they want to, right, the easier it is to co it comes to creating content. Now, whether that's an email, a blog post, a newsletter, you know, a video, a, a podcast, whatever that may be, you're pretty much essentially the bridge from where they currently are with their problems, questions, roadblocks to where they want to be, which is that dream result. And whatever piece of content you're creating, I would just say, is this helping bridge them from where they want to where they want to go? And that's like not platform dependent or specific. I don't really... I'm not like an expert at specific social media app, like platforms. I just take the direct response marketing principles and then apply that to my marketing, my content. Like if you check my phone, I don't have any social media apps. I use a scheduling tool called Metricool and I schedule everything through Metricool to go to social media platforms. Cause honestly, it's a distraction, man. And like, yo, it, it gets in the way a lot of the time. You get on social media, you start scrolling. Like even, uh, I got two phones. One of my phones um, has no apps at all. And then the other one only has IG. It's like, I, I don't really be on social media like that at all. But my content is, it's just like, for me, I'm not really too pressed on like, what's the biggest trend or whatever. It's like, is that content, can you confidently say that this is helping your ideal audience, the people you want to help? And then from there, I said, I let the algorithm do its thing. I'm not an expert in the algorithm, but marketing is marketing despite the regardless of the platform. Yeah, yeah that's real. I, I, I take that same approach. I, I feel like, you know, it, you put it out there, you know, you if you want, I, I feel that if you're on purpose, it's in, like he said, you don't, it's not about winning, it's about taking the long race. See, a lot of people about winning, so they just take stuff out there, even though it may be uh, not ethical or immoral, they'll just put it out there anyway, taking people, taking money from people and things of that nature. And at the end of the day, you're still stuck with like, man, that was it really, Im you know, in the back of your mind, it was, that was jacked up. It was immoral. Instead of say, doing, I'm on purpose, I'm doing it. God, you're my alg algorithm. When you're in due time, when it's when people so supposed to see it, they see it, you yeah. know. And that's the approach I take as well, you know. Because I can't, you know, from my old social media, man, I maxed out my friends. But now on my new social media, you still look at it like, oh, this dude don't know anybody. But on <laughs> yeah. the other way, you see five thousand people. But I'm like, yeah. that's not the right kind of energy I want all the time. Yeah. Not, yeah so. <laughs> Now to add on to that point too, man. Like, there's a, a thing uh, actually Mosey quote I love, and he talks about like the fastest way to a hundred thou isn't the fastest way to a mil, and the fastest way to a mil isn't the fastest way to ten, and the fastest mm -hmm. way to ten mil isn't the fastest way to hundred. So that's not to say that just because you're taking a long way, you're going slow. Now you're still getting after it, you're still going fast, you're going hard, but it's just a different strategy and a different approach depending on how big and you want to take it. And it's like when you're building a skyscraper, the deeper the foundation, the higher the building. Right. And so it's like, while everyone's going up and building a house or whatever, you're building the foundation. So from the outside looking in, it looks like you're going in the wrong direction. It looks like you're going downhill while everyone's growing. But in reality, you're really just building that steady foundation so that you can build something way bigger than they, they could ever imagine. Right. So it's like, and knowing that um, helps you be able to stick with it for that long term. It's not because you're going slower. It's because you're going at it differently. You're taking a different path. That's real. That's real. <laughs> That's so real. Kev, you got something else? Yeah, so for me, so if you could be 22 and your, but your mindset is so positive and I have clients that's 32 um, and then a lot of times they feel at 32, they are a failure because they haven't achieved anything, but they had different circumstances growing up. What was you, what was your heart speak to them who's watching that maybe feel like they um, are trying to give up because they're at a certain age and they haven't accomplished anything? What would you tell them? Yeah, I would say good for them for failing. Like you got room to grow. Like it's no fun when you're, when you're maxed out, right? Like what else? What else is there when you're maxed out, right? It's just like, good for them. You failed. That means you got something to learn and you got some room to improve and grow. And that's where the, the fun is, right? I done flopped on a lot of things. And I think one of the, because like growing up in a struggle, right? 
it's like one thing I realized even before I was like very entrepreneurially minded or whatever but one I'm not sure where that came from but I, one of the things I realized is like I wanted to become a product of my decision not a product of my environment right and I always hated how like in a lot of our communities like yo we're just force fed like victim mentality like we have to adopt like people trying to tell me like oh John but you're a man of color and it's like yeah true I am but then also, and what? Like, what is that doing to benefit me? Like, and a lot of things like, oh, John, did you know that majority of people like that don't graduate college don't do this? It's like, okay, and like, I didn't graduate, I dropped out, right? Not because college was hard, by the way. I had a 378 before I dropped out, you know? I was doing my thing up there. But like, um, we're just kind of force fed a lot of these stats. And for me, it's like, and things that we're supposed to believe, and if we speak against them, then it's like, oh, that's a, that's, you know, that's, you can't do that. You can't say that. Right. And you look, you're frowned upon. And it's like, for me, not having a victim mentality has helped me like change the game and how I think and how I approach life. And it's like, as I said, I have a guy that's working with me, like that's working for me. That's out there fighting battles ahead of me so that I don't have to go through. It's like, Bro, like I, I got everything I got. He equipped me with everything I need within. And so that's like part of the reason I think, but then also it's like, um, you mentioned a lot about something about mindset too there. And like mm -hmm. one of the things I always say is like the reason I see further than most is because I'm standing on the shoulders of giants, right? Meaning like the reason I see further than most cause I had a lot of it, like great people that have been blessed and fortunate enough to meet and see how they view the world, see how they think, see their perspective, and be open and minded enough to receive that, right? And it's just like, I just became from a very early age, a giant melting pot of all these different viewpoints and perspectives. And as I try to figure out the world for myself, I had all these different narrative and perspectives that I could kind of pull from. So I try to take the parts that I like and leave out the parts I didn't. And that kind of helped shape the way I viewed the world. And it's like, man i think the comparison is a thief of joy like just based off that question you said the 32 or whatever and they, they failed like gary v talks about like you're a baby right he just like, he tells everybody you're a baby no matter if you're 10 20 50 like he tells everybody you're a baby because like god willing you still got a lot of life left mm -hmm. right it's just mm -hmm. like man uh there's no limit to where you could take it when you really get after it right mm -hmm. and so it's like who are you comparing yourself to? Like what timeline? Cause at 32, a lot of people still think of you as like a little kid, right? Depending on who you ask, right? If you ask me, I may think you're a geezer, right? But if you ask someone that's a lot older than me, they might be like, oh, you, you know, you're still young. You're still a little man or whatever. It's just like, the only person you could be comparing yourself to is future you. And it's like, if that person is proud, then like, what else really matters? Yeah. Love it. That's real. I, I, that's one of my sayings. I, you know, I, I compete only with myself. Every single day, I always try to be a better, better me. And that man, it took my life and flipped it in overnight. Just, just with that one concept alone. But I know, I don't know, John, if you want to highlight on this. I know you. Uh, last time we talked, you said, you know, so Kevin, the people listening had, a, you had a chance to spend a day with a billionaire. Yeah. Um, can you give him like some key pointers of the different th thought processes? that a billionaire has compared to someone that doesn't have billions that you may have learned in that moment yeah like I, one of the main differences is like a lot of people talk a good game right i feel like the lesson and wisdom he was sharing that day were like so etched into his dna like he wasn't telling you nothing he read in a book like that was really him like mm -hmm. And he like he really lived everything that he said all that advice he was given not because he read there or he went to a mastermind or a workshop like he really embodies that every day you could hear it just in the conviction and how he spoke like it's different it's levels to it and like i ain't never see anything like that he just so much conviction with his behind everything he said like you could tell it wasn't cap at all like so there's that um but like some of the other things that i love like he said one line he said something along the lines of he doesn't do what he does because he's Gary Keller. He's Gary Keller because he do he does what he does. Meaning like he ain't get big and started, you know, making moves the way he was making moves. 
he been making moves and that made him who he am who, who he is mm-hmm. right and like he became somebody because he was acting like that somebody before he actually became that somebody mm-hmm. right and a lot of people have that imposter syndrome where it's like nah i gotta wait until i hit this i gotta wait till i make six figures i gotta wait till i make nine eight figures seven figures i gotta wait till you know i'm financially independent or i'll quit my job and i have my like a lot of people have these they set up these these goals and these you know um parameters they gotta have meet met and this criteria they have to have met before they could do xyz before they could really start purchasing and chasing their dreams right before they could really start helping out the the community right and it's like now nah, you got to start moving like that now so that you can get to the goals that you want right and this, that was probably like number two and then uh the third biggest thing that i learned is um the concept of first creation and second creation so the way you describe it is that we all live two lives right the life we live in our head and then the life that we actually live in reality and everything that happens in reality is just an accumulation of our past thoughts in some way shape or form that led to it and so in order to change where you want to go you got to change what's going on up in your head way before that it can actually manifest right and really working on that mindset and working on your beliefs and working on the you know the subconscious programming that you have that you may not know you have but still running on autopilot by the time you're 35 right about 95 i'm not mistaken percent of like your neurons are already formed your neurological pathways already formed which is why it becomes a lot harder to learn new topics the older you get right because you're pretty much already hard baked by that point once you're past 35 it's like but if you could figure out how to change that and reprogram that then you can then change what you actually was going on with in your actual real life i say that's probably three big things that i that i remember yeah um for me you spoke on something that um i'm very much intrigued by is you did a mastermind for those who are watching who don't know what a mastermind is can you explain what that is and the importance of doing a mastermind yeah so a mastermind is a group of two or more people that come together for a specific purpose right so if you think about it right we're all men of faith right church Mm -hmm. is kind of like a mastermind but in that sense you're masterminding around god in the bible right that's a mastermind right and uh, the way we're talking about it right now where i'm in a business mastermind so we come together to talk about business and how we can grow our business right and so it's like um, the format is usually a lot smaller, right? Usually like less than 20 people or so. Like, anything bigger that, than that wouldn't really be considered a mastermind just because it's like it's too much. It's not a much. Masterminds are a lot more intimate, a lot more like mm-hmm. group facilitation type style where it's like uh, it's more interactive and you get together and with other people who are most likely in your same business or industry or niche or also business owners are doing whatever it is that you're doing and get together and uh, state your hurdles and objections and things you got going wrong in your business that you would like to fix and having the community of all their unique experiences help you brainstorm ideas to get through that in a nutshell that's the purpose of a mastermind and the reason i you know um i wanted to join one is speed right speed wins doesn't that doesn't mean like you don't have to be the best person to win most time if you're the fastest you'll probably win right mm-hmm. not because you're better but because you just by the time other people act you already took action a uh, hundred times over so it's like for me it's like one of the two things that i always make sure to pay for is pay for getting my time back and pay for speed or and pay for access too it's like there's people out there who already are doing what you want to do or have already done it. And so if you could pay to be in a room with those people, whether it's a mastermind or a conference or, you know, a networking event, whatever it may be, like paying for that has helped me expedite my entrepreneurial process. And yeah, I probably would have figured it out on my own. Not sure how long it would have taken it, taken it, but you know i'm just not starting to catch my stride two years in so if i would say if i hadn't joined any mastermind man i probably wouldn't have figured out a lot of this stuff till i was like at this page probably like 25 26 or something like that so it definitely helps take a lot of years and time off that learning curve 
and really condensing right. it down and shortening it. And that helps you start skipping steps. That's right. right. So if those people watching want to look into joining a mastermind, where would you guide them to to try to find a mastermind in their location? Yeah, so I would say one, ask yourself, what would you like to do? A lot of the masterminds now are like virtual, mainly because they have people from so many different places. But in terms of in person, right? Um, I haven't found really any mastermind groups. You could always form one. I would say if you want to, I say this: if you want to form one, find like two to three people who are in similar industry that are headed in the same direction, right? And set up a time to meet either weekly or monthly or whatever it may be, and you can get something going like that and kind of do like hot seat style, where it's like one person, you know, they'll say state their problem. Hey, you know, I'm struggling to get leads for my life coaching business. And then have the other guys or gals like, all right, let's tackle that. What are you currently doing? What are you currently just strategies? Are you doing ads? Are you doing this? Are you doing organic traffic? Are you doing cold emails? Are you doing cold outreach? Like, what's your strategy? So are you doing cold emails? All right, what's your subject lines looking like? What's your body of the text looking like? What's your email nurture sequence that's looking like? Oh, you're doing that, blah, blah, and then just keep on going with it. So it's like having something like that. But if you're looking in terms of like trying to find one, I would say virtually, um, the way I found mine was the guy whose podcast I hopped on. He ha he had a, a mastermind, and so he asked me if I would like to join. And that's how I joined. It's called the Spear and Clover Mastermind, uh, and I don't have any affiliate link for that or something like that. But I'd say without a doubt, like his name is Jason. Joining Jason's mastermind has been the best investment I made this entire year in my entire entrepreneurial journey. If I'm being honest, um, easily. Like that's paid itself over and just this year alone, probably I joined January as I said, two weeks after I joined, I taught that, you know, I taught that class, made that four bands. So right off that, easily made all my money back and then another like five, 10 X or something like that. And then I've made a lot more money since then. So it's like that investment has paid itself over in dividends yeah. so um i would definitely recommend finding someone and i would say find someone who i would say you're aligned with like as a person like their values right you're aligned with because there's a lot of ways to go about doing business right and as uh, tiger mentioned earlier right not every way is ethical or moral or right. you know aligned with what you got going on right so i find someone like as a person like you have similar values as them and then two, um, their teaching style so, you actually enjoy. Because yeah. a lot of people who are very successful and know what they're talking about, but the way they teach doesn't really sit well with you. I joined um, one mastermind group and I was in there for like maybe a month. And after the second call, I was like, yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> Not because the guy wasn't successful, or wasn't a good guy. It's just like the way he spoke and taught was too is too far off from like the way i'm used to speaking to people and so just for that alone i left right not to say he's a bad guy or has you know doesn't know what he's doing way more successful than i am and just his teaching style doesn't really resonate with me no hard feelings so i went my separate ways so i'd say those probably be the two big things that i would look out for yeah. And I know you, I'm sorry, uh, you, I know you said mentioned, you know, something about paying for these courses and things. This is this is some things that I've done as well. And you have we, we deal with a community, you know, on the ground here where a lot of people you say five hundred dollars for a class or something like they're like, oh, no, you know, blah, 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 blah. Right. But, you know, I know and Kev knows you, the more you invest in yourself. Oh, you pay the five hundred dollars. If you get fifteen hundred, two thousand back from that, is that money loss or is that money gain how do you yeah. navigate that what would you say with someone that's struggling with that because a lot of people do struggle with that i paid thousands of dollars for you know yeah. my, but it progressed my speed faster so what would you say you know in the range of you know those, yeah those there's a bible there's a bible verse I'm, I'm gonna butcher it a little bit but it goes something along the lines of that to those who have everything all will be given and to those who have nothing all will be taken yeah right and it's, it's, as i said i might butcher it a little bit but it goes something along those lines and this is a perfect example of that because the people who have not you know what i mean they they're very scared with their money mm -hmm. and uh who said it's i think meek mill said it's scared money don't make no money if yeah, i ever yeah. go broke i'm gonna take your money right it's just like uh that line is so true 
right both of them because it's like the people who don't have it are the ones who play the scariest with the money right and they're so hard pressed about it but like one of the like universal laws i learned about like the law of detachment right the people who don't need it are always going to get what they whatever that it is like the boy in high school like the jock whatever who don't care about none of the girls but was a player and somehow got all the girls even though everyone knew that he was a player and like he was detached from the outcome all the billionaires just be getting more and more and more money right mm. even though they don't need any more money they're detached from the outcome a lot of these people and the people who don't have a lot of money are very attached to their money very very attached to their money and they play very very scared with their money and everything is what do they have to lose instead of what do they have to gain or what are they missing out on if they don't invest and so it's like for people who are newer to this world i'm in a very fortunate situation because when i got my real estate license keller williams as a company they talk a lot about trainings and stuff like that so like as my first business endeavor right being a real estate agent I was already put into like an environment where people like the norm was investing in courses and community and stuff like that. So even though it wasn't my norm, the environment that I joined, that was their norm, which then I adapted to become mine. And so, so someone who is not a business owner, but still wants to grow or just getting into business and wants to grow, like I would say start small. My first course I ever took was a $500 wholesaling course. It was between my sophomore um, first uh, fall and spring semester, that winter break. I took a $500 wholesaling course. And to me, that was a lot of money, a whole lot of money. I was in college. I was, you know, I was working a job at that time and I made the risk and I turned, you know, I started an LLC, which paid some money for that. That was a couple hundred bucks. I got my logo, my domain name, just for an attorney to pay me to say, you like, you can't wholesale in Connecticut. Sidebar, you can. That's a story for another day. But at that time, that was the professional. So I just paid right there like six, seven hundred bucks to get pretty much nothing from that at all. Right. And um, but that helped get me started. That helped get me OK with investing in myself. So if it's not five hundred bucks, then I say ninety seven bucks right? or forty seven bucks, whatever it may be. But take a little something, something and get used to paying for your education and investing in yourself and paying for your growth and work your way up right now i spent i think the most money i ever spent on a thing was like 8800 on a on a on an accelerator program right and that made my stomach hurt like just hitting and I, I broke that up into two payments and even still that made my stomach hurt when i when i hit submit right and i had to tap into my savings to do that but it's like you know you got to do what you got to do to invest in yourself and then from there work your way up and make sure you're investing in stuff that you know is going to help you and the right. person that you're investing in is also very reputable because there's a lot of people who got burned um like joining mastermind groups so i would say always you know talk to a couple friends or family or go into some facebook groups and you know hey i'm gonna invest in so-and-so's course like what's your thoughts whatever have you worked with this person you know what's your experience and always do your research and your homework before you invest anywhere but uh, i would say man if you want to as i said shortcut the process definitely start investing in yourself because you're, you're the greatest ROI that you could ever have. And so people be quick to invest in Tesla, right? Elon Musk don't care about you. Not saying he's a bad person or like, but like he's, he's trying to go his business, his company. He's trying to go himself, right? Are you trying to do the same? But why are you people, people are quick to invest in other people's company and very slow to invest in themselves, yes, yeah. right? And so it's like the question is, do you have faith in yourself? Like, do you believe you're worth the investment? And if the answer is no, well, then there's another issue lying underneath that. And if the answer is yes, why haven't you started yet? Yeah. Well said. You could have the mic on that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you could have just dropped the mic on that one because it's very, it's very, 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 very important. I've been investing in just classes for years, man. But it makes you, if anything, the money going forward is 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 worth it because it changes the way you think. For one, that's invest that's worth the the money right off the top because whoever you're investing in should trigger something in your mind that says, you know what, why you know I didn't nobody never told me that or why I'm not thinking like that or how did he know this and it should want you to know more just yeah. with an investment alone, yeah, one investment alone. But you had to, you know, I I, I attended a course. <clears throat> Uh, some time ago 
where you know I pay the five hundred dollars, right? And you know about these. They they you pay the five hundred dollars, you get into the cores. And then on the back end, okay, I got a core, I got something that I'm gonna charge you, I think they were charging like 27,000. One was 27,000, one was 55,000 uh, for the next, you know, the next part of it. So, yeah, yeah so don't go in, if you, if you don't, if you have a limited income, don't, you can pay the $500 to learn, but you know, you paying 27,000, 55,000, don't be silly in, in, diminish your whole family and take your whole family under because you want to know a little bit more so i'll say yeah. there's a boundary there as well you have to keep so and real, one, one last thing one, one last quick one bro. and you mentioned your mindset like just hitting submit on the payment right people who pay pay attention mm-hmm. so it gets you into the state of mind to say okay i paid some even if it's 25 bucks right but you paid for it. Now you're expecting something. People sign up for free stuff all the time and never show up or never really pay any mind or just have it in the background. But like, as soon as you pay for something, you're more likely to pay attention, mm-hmm. right? And you'll be in a different state of mind. The same material, one person paid, one person didn't. The person who paid more likely than not will implement it sooner, faster, and better than the person who didn't. That's real. So real. Yeah. <laughs> so real but uh kevin i think i i, I don't have any more i was going the last thing i was going to ask you before we end this thing you know there's a lot of things that's going on on in the world today what is one thing that strikes you that you may not say to someone else that you say okay i don't know why this is going on or why people do that or that that it's got it has that that trigger in your mind you're like man i don't even know why people do that what is that yeah. one thing that's at the top of your list that you're like man there's no reason for that yeah i would say Man, George Watson said before he passed away, man, not to get one of the three things he left behind was not to get involved in worldly affairs. And that's still true to this day, bro. There's so many people who be talking about the world as if they understand the world and never left the confines of their state, never left the conf- never left the USA. I'll be talking like they know about the world that they talk about these things. Like, for example, oh, we got to end poverty. Bro, you know how long poverty has been around for? You know how many genius people we've had on this planet? And and somehow none of them figured out how to end poverty. And there's some things in life I would say, like the truth of life is on the other side of life, right? So only the the only way to get the answers, you gotta give your life up for it, right? And so it's like, no one here will ever have all the answers. Mm -hmm. And it's like these people, a lot, especially a lot of people my age, be so like, man, just like, in so deep in all these, things and talking so confidently on things they truly don't understand like another one like oh and and you know world hunger like <laughs> the food has been around forever like it's not something that it's not an issue that just came about last year like these some of these issues that we feel with it's just part of like the human like like the human experience and not everything has a solution i think humans have uh uh, they 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 struggle dealing with the fact that they'll never truly understand all there is to understand. I yeah. feel, and a lot of people, I feel like I don't watch the news. I don't, I'm not up to date with what's going on. Like, there's a lot of stuff going on. And it's like for me, it's like, yeah, it sounds morally just to speak on these, you know, inter, you know, ex, inter, international affairs and issues that they got going on. Like, you sound like you're doing a great thing for the world reposting your little stories and stuff like that but it's like at the same time like you can't even fix the situations you got in your own home oh man and you're trying to solve these worldly (laughs) issues you feel me so it's like fix yourself and fix the situation in your environment locally before you start trying to tackle all these bigger things and not to say that those bigger things don't need don't aren't worth like fixing it's just like know where you're at in the process right you got situations at home that you can't figure out yet you try to freaking tackle world hunger yeah. as if you know you, that's gonna be solved anytime soon and not to say that it shouldn't be solved i'm just saying like you know know where you're at before you start trying to take on all these world challenges i feel i feel like a lot of people waste their time in that yeah that's real so so kev i, I think that that's that's the drop the mic right there because i yes, definitely sir. I definitely believe in that, and I'm th- I, I definitely understand that as well. If you can't tackle what's right there in your home, 
how can you tackle world issues? So that's what we're going to leave with everybody today. Make sure you tackle what's at home first. If your home is not right, there's no way you can take on the world. So Kev, I'll let you take us out. John, I appreciate you coming on, man. My brother, we definitely, I know I'll see you at FinCon. My, my goal is to um, get one of our listeners to give out a free ticket to uh, FinCon so where someone can join me. Uh, and, uh, if Kev comes, I don't know if Kev is coming or not, join me at FinCon as well in Atlanta. So uh, that's yes, what I for, for, for this podcast to give it away. So uh, Kev, that's on you. All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning into the show. we see you again next week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Peace. All right, John. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, brother. I appreciate you guys, man. Thank I thank, thank you again for having You was a wealth of knowledge, brother. <laughs> thank you. <God. laughs> All right, take it easy.